In this video, as I promised, we'll start coding. But before, let me first explain what a pixel is. A pixel is actually short for picture element, and it is the smallest unit of a digital image that can be controlled or manipulated. When these pixels are stringed together in columns and rows, that's how you can see stuff on your screen, whether it be your computer screen or your iPad screen or your phone screen. When someone is saying that like, hey, my computer has a resolution of 1920 by 1080, it essentially means that that screen has a number of 1920 pixels in width and 1080 pixels in height. And a pixel has a color value and a brightness value. And when you manipulate or when you change these values, that's how you change the picture or the image that you see on the screen. So why is a pixel important in our context? So what are we trying to do? We're trying to write code to draw something on the screen, right? So essentially all of our commands come down to one thing, it is changing the colors and the brightness of the pixel on our canvas. If we go back and look at the two functions that we went over in the previous video, create canvas and background. Create canvas 400 comma 400. What are the units of 400 comma 400? It is the unit of pixels, right? We asked the computer to create a canvas of size 400 pixels in width and 400 pixels in height. And background, we don't really know what's the number 220. We just know that 220 equals to light gray. But this function essentially is telling the computer to color all the pixels on the canvas to be equal to the color 220. Even in the default code, right, with the two functions here, they both have something to do with changing pixels or doing something with the pixel on the screen. Background here is an instruction to change all the pixels to be one color, but that would be kind of boring, right? What we want to do is we want to be able to control and manipulate the color and the brightness of each of the pixels on the canvas. The way that we would be able to do that is first, we need to be able to locate each of the pixels on the screen. And for us to do that, we need to understand the concept of a coordinate system. In this video, we'll focus on a Cartesian coordinate system. So what is a Cartesian coordinate system? A Cartesian coordinate system is a tool for us to use to specify a location of a point on a two-dimensional plane. And it has two main axes, an x-axis and a y-axis, a horizontal axis and a vertical axis, right? And the way for us to locate each of the positions on that plane, you need to know the distance that point is from the origin, 0, 0, right? So you might be familiar with the traditional Cartesian coordinate system where the point of origin, 0, 0, is in the middle of the axis, right? So on the x-axis, it goes from left to right, negative to positive, whatever is on the left of the origin is negative and whatever is on the right of the origin is positive. And on the y-axis, whatever is below the origin is negative, while whatever is above the origin is positive. But this is different from the computer graphics current system. In this current system, the origin is not in the middle, but it's actually at the top left corner. On the x-axis is still the same, where whatever is on the left of the origin the values is negative, and whatever is on the right, the value is positive. But on the y-axis, that is what is different, and you need to really remember this in order for you to locate the correct point on our screen. Whatever is above the origin, it's negative, and whatever is below the origin, it's positive. So it goes from negative to positive at, as it goes from top to bottom. So now that we know how to locate a point on the canvas or how to locate each of the pixels on our canvas, we are able to do more interesting things. We're able to write commands that are more interesting. And in this video, I will show you how to write commands to draw shapes on our canvas. So let's start with the simplest thing. What if we want to draw a line? A line is essentially what? <laughs> a line is when you're connecting two dots, right? So what you will need is you will need a point one and a point two. Let's say that you wanna draw a line between point 50, 50 and 200, 200. 
Within p5.js, you can use a function called line. And line um, takes in four arguments or four inputs. And the four inputs are the x and y coordinate of the first point and the x and y coordinate of the second point. So we say that we wanted to draw a line between point 50, 50 and 200, 200, right? So you just have to write line 50, 50, 200, 200. Then let's try it. OK, so what you see here, the top left corner is the origin, right, which is 0, 0. And the point here, the first point here is what? 50, 50. And smack in the middle of our canvas, which is the middle point, is 200, 200, right? So you see that we have a line that goes from 50, 50 to 200, 200. Let's go to a different shape. What if we want to draw a circle? To draw a circle, you need a function called ellipse. And ellipse can take in three or four inputs, or three or four arguments, depending on whether you want the width and the height to be the same or not. The first two arguments that you need to put is the point of the center of the circle. Let's say that we want to draw a circle at 200, 200 and we want the size of the width and the height of that circle to be 100. So I just put in three arguments, 200, 200, and 100. And there you go. You see that that circle, now it lays over the line, right? Because the command comes after. You see that the size of the width and the height is, is 100, and the center of the circle is at 200, 200. Let's say that we don't want the height to be the same. Let's say we want it to be 50. So you can just put the fourth argument to be something else. So now that I show you two functions of how to draw a shape, let's look at what else is there. You can go to a website called p5js.org slash reference. And these are all the functions within the library. But I want you to go to shape and under 2D primitives to see the different functions here for drawing 2D shapes. If we go into ellipse, which we just went through, within here, you can see that it talks about the description of that specific function, an example of how to draw it, right? You can see it has ellipse, and then it has the x and y position, and then this circle is off the size 55, 55, right? So you can actually put in two of the same numbers if you want to put in four arguments, or you can just put 155, right? It gives you a syntax of how to write it, and also it gives you the description of parameters. Basically, these are the inputs that that function asks you to put in in order for it to execute the command. So if you go back, there are many other functions here. Why don't you give it a try and think about some interesting shapes, some interesting things that you want to draw, and draw it out maybe on a paper first, and then use these functions to try and recreate it with code.